Google just dropped Memory Bank, which is their new innovative solution for managing, creating, and automating long-term memory for your AI agent. And this isn't just a new GCP product, it is also based on a novel research that they found on how we can create effective long-term memory for AI agents. And in this video, I'm gonna show that how you can utilize it in action and create that for your own project. Before we get into the details of memory bank of Google and see that in action, let's discuss about why do we need long-term memory for AI agents. As you might know, these agents, or better to say language models that you use that for your AI agents, they are stateless. They are not saving any sort of memory or conversation. So you need to create with some workarounds, a sort of a system that can manage those interactions and perceive them as a memory so you can use it for personalization. Let's say here in this example, if we want to ask that, can you help me with a plan for a trip to Italy? It might actually help me with something, some actions or retrieving some knowledge or calling some tools. But if tomorrow or a couple of days after, or even if I start a new session with the chatbot for continue the planning to, to Italy, it won't be able to do that because it has no clue what was the conversation previously in the previous session. If you chat right now with Gemini or ChatGPT or Claude, you can sort of see that you can still continue that conversation because on back end, they're managing this long-term memory for you. So even if you cut that session, come back tomorrow and switch the session, you will see that still the answer is pretty personalized. It's like it knows you for a while as you're chatting and interacting with it. So how can we do the same for our agents and specifically through this new novel solution of Google with Memory Bank? Well, so far there are multiple ways before we talk about memory bank and before memory bank, you might say that, oh, I can push all the context of my chat to the prompt. So all sort of historical conversation, all the points, all the information that that language model or agent need to know from the history, I can put it in a prompt or cache it as a context. I would say this is the worst thing you can do because first of all, it's pretty expensive. You keep pushing all this information to max out your token in the prompt which is really not efficient and maybe not all that memory is needed. Second, it's pretty slow. As you create these prompts larger and larger from the size perspective, you are introducing latency for your AI agents. And that last but not least, there's a great chance that you will confuse the agent because you're feeding lots of information. Beside that, some better solutions that you have seen the most potentially is let's do similarity search. That means I will save all the historical conversation or interaction of my AI agents. When I need to know some sort of that information as a memory, I can do rack or similarity search to retrieve relevant chunk of information from the past to call it as a memory, to give it to the current state of my AI agent that I'm chatting with it, which sort of is okay and it works, but it has two main challenges. First of all, there's a rigid granality. That means if let's say I want to plan to Italy and I'm allergic to gluten, these are two facts that is about me. So if I'm going to use this similarity search approach, usually they sort of save it in a fixed chunk. That means this is one memory and this is another fact for the memory. So these are separated and these two are disconnected. And I'm going to tell you why that disconnectivity might be challenging for specific scenarios. The second challenge is that it has fixed retrieval. That means right now, again, if I ask, what are some healthy dinner ideas based on this information that I have, it says usually is allergic to penicillin. Okay, this is a fact, but it's totally irrelevant to the current query that I asked. So how we can make it adaptable and even this memory to be continuously learning and adapting itself, not just based on rigid retrieval and rigid granularity on saving even memory. So this is technically what memory bank comes in to resolve that. And this is based on what they added in their research paper. So it has mainly four big contributions in high level, and then we'll talk about the details. This is truly personalized, so it will understand all the user preferences in the past as a memory, and it automatically choose what portion of the past is helpful for now to use it. So it has that mechanism in place, and we're going to talk about in details of that, how they do it. Second, it all maintains continuity. That means you don't need to shift all the conversation to the memory. It knows what sort of portion of the conversation is needed to be created as a memory. 
So it provides better context because they have some re-ranking methodology on backend that works based on reinforcement learning or RL, and it adapts itself as it retrieves relevant information from the past, and it can obviously improve the user experience compared to other approaches we talked about. So going through the details now, how it works. First of all, when you have interaction, not just conversation with your AI agent, you need to create an agent engine session in GCP. Well, you might say what this is. I have already created a video about it. I will add it to the top right of the video. This is a GCP product that let you deploy your AI agents. And of course, where is the best place to add memory? The place that you deploy your agent. This is why memory comes in there. So not only you can deploy your agent there, but also you can attach that long-term memory automatically comes with it. And then the MM memory bank gonna be there to automatically extract and store key information through this interaction that you have with your AI agents. And lastly, your agent response, but this time in a personalized manner, even if you come back tomorrow and totally start a new session, the memory is still there for you. All right, now what is their secret sauce? Or when we talk about memory bank, on backend, exactly how they resolve the current solutions for locked in memory. Two approaches. Number one, they call it prospective reflection as they noted in the paper. So what do they do here is, potentially when you chat with your agents, you have fragmented history, like different information, even for the same session or multiple sessions. What they do, they grab all of that and potentially they will give it to another language model to create a cohesive memory. So based on these three fragmented history, it generates just two lines saying that, okay, I know this information about the user. So instead of saving these three as what other memory management systems do, I just save this one. That makes me much more cohesive. The second circuit sauce is retrospective reflection. This is the RL piece that does re-ranking. So let's say if the user asks, I want to book a flight to Hawaii, and the agent retrieve two info, so user likes this type of seats and user is allergic to gluten. Well, the first one was useful. This is a memory that is needed potentially for saving this ticket, but the second one, not really. So the system now learns from what memories were actually useful and constantly refining its retrieval for the next time based on how the user react or behave to this retrieve memories within that session. And as we discussed, they have released the more details of their approach that how this memory bank works on the research paper with this title, check that out. But that was really the summary of what has been written in high level within that research paper. And to see just a quick example in action, how long-term memory would be helpful. Let's say I'm going to ask a question from the agent that my skin is really dry. It giving me some recommendation. Maybe a month after I'm going to ask a follow-up question, a whole new session it knows that, oh, it's like your skin is relating to its normal. So it knows what happened previously. And this is really all what we talk about long-term memory for AI agents. And okay, now let's get into the practical part. How do we use this now evolved memory management system for long-term sessions with AI agents? Well, as of now, two ways. You can maybe use just the REST API of the memory bank that is coming from Agent Engine. So that means regardless of what framework you use for creating your AI agents, you're using Landcraft, Llama Index, Google ADK, it doesn't matter. You can still use this REST API to update, retrieve information from the memory and utilize it in your agentic uh, solution. But another path to use that is through Google ADK because Google ADK has native integration with this memory bank. And what is ADK? Again, I created a separate video about Google ADK, which is a new open source framework released by Google for creating agentic solutions. I will add the video of that to the top right of the screen. And because it is also released by Google, that's why ADK has native integration. That means you don't need to do anything, retrieving, managing, and updating all those information to the long-term memory is automatically done for you when you create your agents with ADK memory bank is there doing everything for you without you necessarily doing any extra coding. This is a notebook comes from Vertex AI memory bank sample. So I will add the link of that to the Discord channel. The link of the channel is in video description below. Go to the, to the channel. There's a reference section. You will get access to all these samples that I'm utilizing. Plus also all the references of previous videos. So obviously I need to install Google Cloud AI platform because I want to interact with Vertex AI and Gemini is my choice of language model here. And then Google ADK because I want to use memory banks integration with Google ADK for creating AI agent with long-term memory. 
So I could be installed that and because I'm running that in Google Colab, I need to authenticate, but you don't need to do it if you're using non-Google Colab Pythonic environment. So let me do that quickly. All right, the authentication is there. And then here you just need to provide your project ID to connect to your language model in Vertex that I am using. And there you go, I just install it. This is just simply use it utilizing Gemini 2.5 Flash. And then it gives also creating an ID for that session because we want to see if I create multiple sessions, if long-term memory works to retrieve information from previous sessions of interacting the user, which is me, with the agent here. So let's move forward. You can see that I have already created an ID automatically created for me. I click on import. These are the new part. Now I can import this memory bank from Google ADK. So I just clicked on it and there you go. Here we just have two helper functions. The first one is helping us for running a single turn. It is just simply calling the agent, getting the response back and retrieving the response for me. And this one is creating a chat loop. As you will see, I will open up a chat pool. I will chat with my agent. And then when I type quit, exit or buy, it will end up that chat loop. It's just a simple helper function. Moving forward here, I want to create my agent engine as we discussed that is needed not only for deploy your agents, but also now here using memory bank. So uh, very quick, I just created my new agent engine with this URL and I will do it after the session. Now here, what I'm gonna do, I wanna define my agent with ADK. As you can see, it's pretty simple and straightforward like other agency frameworks. So you just need to define a name, an instruction that what this agent is supposed to do. These are just examples. And here's the tricky part. For adding long-term memory of memory bind to your Google ADK, you need to add it as a tool here as we import it from Google ADK. So I, I will run it as well. And that's it. Lastly, I want to create ADK runner. ADK runner is really the executor that called that agent that we specified on the top with the agent name, with the session ID and all those information we specified. And also I will add this memory bank as well in my ADK runner. This is also a new thing. I will run it as is, and now I am ready to start my session. So this is my first session that I'm gonna start, and I wanna start asking some questions. So this is using the helper function we specified, and I wanna give this information about me, so I will see if Memory Bank automatically capture them, summarize them in a cohesive, uh, cohesive manner, add it to that Memory Bank, and let's see if we can retrieve it later in a new session. So I wanna copy all of that, with even excluding you, which is better, maybe I remove it, but let's go with as is. I'll add it here, hit enter, and waiting for the agent response. All right, the assistant or agent just responded, great to connect with you, so I wanna just type by because these are the three things I wanted to give the agent to save it to the memory. Okay, now the session is done, it's finished. I can come back one year later, it doesn't matter. Even I can shut down all the codes and everything and just call the same agent engine that I have my agent again. So, or the memory bank REST API, which ADK does that on backend. I want, now wanna start a new session. So I wanna add this, first of all, before I start a new session, I will add this current session to the memory to make sure the memory bank synchronously update that long-term memory uh, store for me, which I believe it's using Spanner database on back. Now let's start your new session, session number two, the same thing, I'm using the same ADK runner. And this time I wanna ask, do you remember who I am? So let's copy this. And again, you can do it in long time after, it doesn't matter really, and it shouldn't be relevant on just this topic of code or this environment. This is whole new session for a while after, so I will ask the question of what do you remember about me? I'm expecting that it give me the information it knows from the past about me to retrieve from long-term memory. And there you go. It truly said that I love hiking. I have a dog named Max and I work as an agent engineer. So the same information we provided on the top was able to be retrieved by this memory bank. And of course you need to, if you want to avoid any extra charges, delete this engine. All right, that was about memory bank released by Google for managing long-term memory. As they noted in their benchmarks, their performance with memory bank is better 
compared to other common systems of managing long-term memory. So check this out. I hope that you found the video helpful. If yes, I would be very thankful if you click on like icon and make sure you share your thoughts in comment section and subscribe so you won't next, miss the next week video. Take care.